Which train holds the all-time U.S. speed record? Perhaps the train that reaches the highest speeds today in regular service. Amtrak's Acela Express. The Acela reaches speeds of 150 miles per hour daily. And in at least one series of tests in September of 2012, it reached a top speed of 165 miles per hour, or even 170 through Princeton Junction, New Jersey. But even that is still short of the all-time U.S. speed record. How about the new Acela train sets, the Avalia Liberty? Although they are reported to offer 10 mile per hour faster speeds than the current train sets when in regular service, their speed tests in 2021 also reached about 170 miles per hour, the same as the previous sets. Another early American foray into high-speed rail came with the United Aircraft Turbo Trains. On December 20th, 1967, during a race against a Metroliner on what is now the Northeast Corridor, the turbo train achieved a speed of 170.8 miles per hour. This still holds the world record for fastest speed by a gas turbine power train. It's unclear if either Acela train set ever topped this speed in tests, but the official rail high-speed record in the U.S. belongs to another classic train. Would you believe me if I told you it was this? The Bud RDC. RDC stands for Rail Diesel Car. Built by the Bud Company, it was the most successful diesel multiple unit in U.S. history. The RDC was a self-propelled passenger car powered by diesel engines, eliminating the need for a separate locomotive. Initially aimed at serving less populated regions where traditional rail service was too expensive, the RDC became widely popular for short distance and regional routes across North America. Its innovative design featured a streamlined body, efficient fuel use, and the ability to operate independently, making it an ideal solution for smaller rural rail lines. Over the years, the Bud RDC gained a reputation for reliability and comfort, with over 400 units built, many of which continued in service for decades, even after newer trains took over the majority of long-haul routes. So how did this modest rail motor car from the late 1940s beat the pinnacle of modern railroad engineering to achieve the U.S. speed record? Well, it had a little help from the jet age. In 1954, Robert Young and Alfred E. Perlman took the reins of the struggling New York Central Railroad, which was facing significant financial challenges. Passenger rail service in particular was on the decline as more Americans opted for air travel and cars. By the 1960s, passenger trains had become a financial burden for most U.S. railroads. Around the same time, Japan's successful introduction of the Shinkansen bullet train in 1964 sparked interest in high-speed rail as a potential solution for major U.S. cities. Perlman, always looking for ways to improve efficiency, saw this as an opportunity to innovate. And by 1965, the idea of using jet turbine engines for high-speed rail was proposed. The vision came to fruition in 1966 with the M497 project. Don Wetzel, an engineer at the New York Central's Collinwood shop, led the conversion of a 1953 RDC-3 into a high-speed test vehicle, equipped with two surplus jet engines from the U.S. government. The goal was to achieve record-breaking speeds on existing tracks, and the car was slightly redesigned, including a sleek nose. Number boards from F-unit engines were used as the makeshift windshields. Within a month, the modified rail car was ready for testing, and on July 23, 1966, the M497 set a U.S. rail speed record of just over 183 miles per hour on its run in Ohio. Though the test was successful, the use of jet engines proved impractical for regular service due to safety and efficiency issues. And despite the groundbreaking nature of the experiment, it was largely dismissed by the rail industry as little more than a publicity stunt. The valuable data on high-speed rail's potential on conventional tracks was overshadowed by government-backed projects like the Metroliner and the Turbotrain. The M497 was eventually returned to regular service and was retired in 1984. Although the project's impact was overlooked at the time, it played an important role in demonstrating the feasibility of high-speed rail on existing infrastructure, paving the way for future initiatives like Amtrak, the Northeast Corridor, and other rail investments in the U.S. The M497's legacy, though often forgotten, set a precedent for high-speed rail development in the country. And sadly for us here in the U.S., 
This record is surpassed daily in revenue service by trains in Europe. It's not the most fair comparison, since most European high-speed trains run on new, dedicated rights-of-way. Explore another train that has routes more similar to our own high-speed network in our video from last month. Please like and subscribe, and consider giving a super thanks to help with the licensing costs of historic footage in this video and others like it. Thank you for watching Rail Weekly.